Welcome, everyone. I am John Ryan of SportsMemo.com, and I'm joined by my co-host, as always, on Tuesdays. That would be Jesse Scholl, and you are watching The Daily Dime. It's NBA, NCAA basketball, bite my tongue. It's March Madness. Show that uh, we're going to break down three games. Jesse's going to do two. I'm going to do one. These are all on the Tuesday card. Make sure you get over to SportsMemo.com as well. And check out all the written content that the guys are putting up for the NCAA tournament. And it'll just make you a better, more astute handicapper if you do. Welcome to the show, Jesse. We're going to start with your play here with the St. Bonaventure Bonnies going up against the Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado is a four-point favorite here in this matchup. 33% of the bets are on the Bonnies. Not surprised there. They went 20 and 9 and obviously did not make the tournament. They're 11 and 17 and 1 against the spread, 2 and 6 against the spread on the road. Last 10, though, they finished strong 8 and 2, 6, 3 and 1 against the spread. You know, it makes me think of those Indiana Hoosiers who played pretty well down the stretch as well. They too had 20 wins, but they're in the playing game tonight. So I guess the Big Ten outweighed the Big East in that one. Colorado is 12 and 5 in their home games. The record is 21 and 11 straight up. 13, 17 and 2. They finished strong as well, going 8 and 2 over the last 10, 7 and 3 against the spread. Take it away, Jesse, and tell us where to put our money. Well, John, I've got my eye on the home team here. As you mentioned, Buffalo did win eight of their last, uh, the Colorado Buffaloes did win eight of their last 10. And they won four of their last five home games. They did finish fourth in the Pac-12. Uh, most notable, though, is they actually finished first in the Pac-12 in three-point shooting percentage. We know how, uh, how, how important that is to these games. And uh, they were shooting 37% from, uh, from beyond the arc this season. Second in the Pac-12 in free throw percentage. Another key statistic here when you get into tournament play. And uh, the Bonnies, not great as a road team, uh, not quite as good as a three-point shooting team. Uh, they only shoot 31.8% from beyond the arc. On the road, 2-8 uh, and eight against the spread in their last 10 road games. Uh, the Bonnies average just 61.8 points per game on the road. The Buffaloes averaging 72.7 points per game at home. Colorado, 7-3-1 and one against the spread in their last 11 as a favorite. I do like Colorado here to uh, win and cover that four-point spread. I'm, I'm with you on that too, uh, Jesse. I want to ask you a question. Um, the question is, with Colorado and St. Bonaventure feeling that they you know, probably should have been in the tournament, we look at the NIT sometimes for advantages with teams that are going to have a tremendous letdown, like the Oklahoma Sooners uh, come to mind that are also playing tonight. Do you think any of these teams are in that position? And if so, which one uh, do you think is going to be more, I don't want to say lethargic, but more you know, hungover from the, the idea that they were going to be in the big tournament and now they're playing in the, the NIT? Well, I... I... I mean, I don't know that either of these teams have too much to complain about or either of these teams should have had too high of expectations of, of being in the tournament. So I think they're both right where they want to or right where they should be. And uh, I don't see a letdown for either team, really. OK, fair enough. And I join you with those uh, Buffaloes. I think that is the right side. Let's move on to my game here. This is the Santa Clara team against Washington State. Washington State opened as a two and a half point favorite, Jesse. They're now three and a half point favorite with 65% of the interest being on the Washington State Cougars. Santa Clara uh, comes in this game with a posted total of 151 and a half points. And that line is still at 151. They went 21 and 11. Five and five on the road. They are 19, 12 and one overall for the season against the number. They went six and four against the number in those road games, and they finished very strong. Seven and three down the stretch, eight and two against the spread. Conversely, Washington State went five and five the last ten, and three and seven against the spread. So I kind of feel like we have a team here with Santa Clara that may be out to prove something. And when I say that, if you take away basically the five weeks that Santa Clara is six foot nine, Rankic. Rankage. 
I can't say those words, but with all due respect, he's a great player. He was sidelined from mid-November into December. You know what? Santa Clara might have been the fourth West Coast Conference qualifier to make it to the big dance. And I, I do believe that. And that conference actually may be getting better and better year after year now over the last three seasons. Well, it's interesting to note that the ACC has definitely regressed and regressed significantly this year. So I found that interesting, Jesse. Uh, so with him back in the action, I think the wrong team is actually favored here. I think Santa Clara wins this by as many as five or more points. Supporting that for my predictive models, I'm expecting Santa Clara to have kind of a field day with this Washington State Cougars defense. The models say that they will shoot 48% from the field or higher. There's a 75% probability they'll shoot 50% or better. And did you know Santa Clara is 7-1 straight up when they have made 48-55% to 55% of their shots in a game this season? And Washington State does not do well when a team shoots well against them. They went 1-8 this season when they have allowed that shooting percentage. So if we get you know, that 75% area on, on the, the models to be correct, I think Santa Clara wins this game outright going away. All right, Jesse, let's move on to the third and final game. And this is a great matchup, in my opinion. This is a 12 versus 12 and first of all, what makes that great is everybody is focused on the 12s. And boy, oh boy, could Indiana or Wyoming upset St. Mary's in the first round? Well, I'll tell you what, the answer is yes. Based on my power ratings, I have Indiana almost as uh, like a one point, one and a half point underdog against St. Mary's. Wyoming would be more of a five to five and a half point underdog against St. Mary's should that happen. First of all, Jesse, what team do you think is going to win this playing game tonight, and why? Well, I don't know about when. I'm expecting it to be quite a close game. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those wild finishes, uh, buzzer beater style. And in, in that case, I'm going to go with the uh, the dog. Uh, I see the public is uh, is heavy on Indiana. It looks like at least 65% of the tickets are on the Ho Hoosers, and uh you know, the Cowboys, uh, they, they did struggle down the stretch. They, they lost five, five of their last nine games. The Hoosiers also struggled down the stretch. I mean, they won a couple big games in the uh, Big Ten tournament, but they did lose eight of their last 12 games. Uh, and, they, again, I'm looking at the free throw percentages. The Cowboys, one of the better teams in the Mountain West, shooting free throws. Uh, the Hoosiers, dead last in the Big Ten under 70% free throw shooting mm. that haunt them here in this game. Uh, the Cowboys nine and three against the spread in their last 12 neutral site games, 11 and four against the spread in their last 15 as an underdog. Uh, the Hoosiers did go to the, as I mentioned, went to the big 10 semifinal, but because of that, this will be their third game in five nights. That's a situation they've struggled in. They're one and seven against the spread in their last eight when playing three games in five days. Uh, Indiana failed to cover for the last five NCAA tournament games. Uh, both teams over their last 10 games have a point def differential uh, of one or less. That means they've scored roughly the same amount as they've conceded in their last five games, which is another indicator to me that this game could be close. And uh, for that reason, I will take the points. I don't blame you taking the points, and, uh, and I like that that side. And I was looking at some of the players in this matchup. I think one of the key matchups, Jesse, is the the big guys. The Indiana has six foot nine power forward Trace Jackson Davis. He's averaging eighteen point one points per game on the season. He'll be going up against Wyoming's Graham Ek, who is averaging nineteen point six points per game this season. And you know, Wyoming is plays like a Big Ten school. Uh, just because they're not in the Big Ten Conference doesn't mean schools can't play that way, right? But they grind it. And I think what you'll see is is uh, Wyoming looking to try to wear down Indiana, which is kind of a flip of what Big Ten schools usually do to opponents that are outside their conference. But I do I do think here, too, the, the wrong team is favored. So, uh, you know, for pizza money, I am very tempted to take Santa Clara and Wyoming and uh, just create a little money line parlay there just in case uh, our assessments are right. I will say I like your play on Santa Clara as well. 
I did have them in uh, last week's game against St. Mary's. I think they were a five and a half point dog, losing by five. So they came through for me, and I I, I do like uh, that play on Santa Clara as well. Well, thanks very much, Jesse, for the support. But that will bring us to the conclusion of Tuesday, March 15th, 2022 Daily Dime Show. Be sure to come back tomorrow for our next edition of the Daily Dime. And always remember two things, folks, especially during March Madness. Bet with your head, never over it, and may all the wins be yours.